Today everyone, the topic that I will be discussing today is foundation elements of system administration. Let us first define some of the terms that we will be using in this discussion. Workstations or workstation are computer hardware dedicated to a single customer's work. Number two, connectivity refers to the ability of each element in the system to exchange data with the other elements. Number three, availability refers to the percentage of time that an element or user gets in the total time of the network. Number four, performance is assessed by the nature of the DDP and the applications it supports. Number five, distributed data processing. A data processing network where some functions are performed in different places on different computers and are connected by transmission facilities. Number six, server is a computer that provides data to other computers. It may serve data to system on a local area network or LAN or a wide area network one over the internet. Number seven, service is the function that the server provides. A server or sorry, a service may be built on several servers that work in conjunction with another computer. Number eight, domain name uh, system is the phone book of the internet. DNS translates domain names to IP addresses to browsers so browsers can load internet resources. Number nine, packet is a small amount of data sent over a network such as a LAN or the internet. We already know the importance of an operating system. It is imperative that the operating system must always at its optimum in order for it to carry out the operations that it needs to do. Aside from this, it can also detect and correct mistakes before they become serious and helps to minimize wastage and loss. Now, in order to do this, the operat uh, operating system must be managed properly. Here are the three tasks that needs to be done to manage the operating system of a workstation. First, loading the system software and applications initially. The operating system and applications must be installed correctly so that the needed tools to perform a given, a given task can be performed. Second is update the system software and applications. Now, updating the system and applications is very important so that the bugs and updated tools are installed. And lastly, configure network parameters. Configuring uh, the network parameters enables connectivity, um, availability, and performance in the computer networks. So, it is always important, okay, to do these three tasks. Okay, in order for your operating system to be, or sorry, to perform uh, its capabilities. Now, let us discuss Evard's life cycle of machine. In all the machine life cycle, a machine moves between these states. Uh, new, clean, configure, unknown, and off. Let's uh, discuss them one by one. Let me zoom in. Okay. So, new, 
means a new machine or a new workstation. Okay? Second is clean. Okay? A computer with the OS installed but not configured to work in the environment. Uh, let's say, for example, its network is unconfigured. So, there is no network communication between workstations or computers. Number three, configured. A computer that is configured correctly according to the requirements of the computing environment. Next, we have a known. A computer that has been misconfigured. So, communication between networks is uh, uh, not possible because of the misconfigured uh, uh, network uh, protocols. Okay, uh, so again, uh, unknown is a computer that has been misconfigured or has gotten out of date or perhaps been borrowed by an intern or returned with strains or sorry, stains on it. Okay, so it um, we mentioned a, a computer that has gotten out of date. So it means that the computer uh, is not yet updated or the operating system is not yet uh, updated. Next, we have off. Okay, so the off means the, it's all done. Okay, retired, uh, accessed, or a dead parrot. Okay, so or a computer is simply shut down. Okay, or has been shut down. Okay, now the machines goes... Uh, through different process as it moves between states. So again, the new, clean, configured, unknown, and off is what we call the state, the state of a, a uh, machine, okay? So between the states, okay, there is a process or there are different processes that happens, okay? And this consists of build, initialize, okay? And then we have the update, okay? Entropy, debug, rebuild, and retire. So let's talk about them one by one. So first is build. Now, uh, in the build process, okay, during the build process, the operating system is installed on the machine. Okay, so we are installing. Okay, so uh, if ever you will be using a workstation, the first software that needs to be installed is the operating system. So, that is what you call the build process. Okay? Next, another is initialized. Okay? This occurs directly after build. And at many sites, uh, is thought of as part of the same process. Um, this is the initial set of modifications to the operating system's image that are required to have the computer operate in the environment, okay? So, this will typically include network configuration and many includes OS patches and other changes, okay? So, once the installation is complete, the computer is, quote-unquote, theoretically, a functional citizen of the computing environment. Next, we have update. Okay, so the update at some point after the installation, the computer will probably have to be modified. Perhaps the network configuration has changed or a user needs to be added or an OS patch needs to be applied or even the machine needs some kind of new functionality. Whenever the cost or whatever the cost, okay, the computer needs to be updated in order to bring the machine into uh, conformance with the requirements. In most cases, this will happen continually for the lifetime of the computer. So, updating uh, will always happen, okay, because it is important, okay, because one of the main reasons why we need to update the operating system is to uh, patch, okay, patch the, the bugs, okay, in the operating system. Next is entropy. Okay, so the entropy refers to the gradual process of change that results in a computer okay, that has an unknown state. Okay, the causes for this are numerous. 
this may include, for example, um, undisciplined changes made by the machine, major changes in the environment, or most probably some unexplained problems. Next, we have the bug. Okay, the bug refers to the process of debugging an unknown machine and getting it back to uh, specifications. Uh, this is usually an intensive hands-on experience. Okay, so debugging can often involve updating as well. Okay, so debugging, we all know in computer lingo, uh, when you say debug, it means you're correcting uh, errors. Okay, next, okay is rebuild okay in some cases a machine will need to be rebuilt either because of some kind of problem or because the changes uh, to be made are so drastic that simple updates make no sense okay so for example a rebuild re, uh, sorry a rebuild is typically done when up, uh, upgrading from one major revision of an os to the next Okay, the rebuild process usually con uh, consists simply of reapplying the build and initialization process uh, to the machine. Lastly, we have retire. Okay, so this is the process of turning a machine off or shutting the, your computer off, shutting down your computer. In some sites, there is an official process for this. Uh, in or uh, in others, it is merely or it merely involves turning the computer off or forgetting it exists. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, the next topic is server management. So, um, as defined earlier. Uh, a server is a computer that provides data to other computers. So here are some of the features of a server. Okay, so we have extensibility, uh, more CPU performance, uh, high performance uh, uh, I/O or input output. Okay, uh, another feature is upgrade options, uh, rack mountable, uh, no site access needs. And high ability options, availability options, uh, maintenance contracts, management options. So those are some features that this, uh, that we'll be discussing. Okay, first, okay, uh, first uh, feature is extensibility. Now, servers usually have either more physical space inside for hard drives and more stats for cards and CPUs, or are engineered with high throughput connectors that enable use of special peripherals okay so there are a lot of slots okay slots okay where you can uh, plug in some peripherals okay like for example your memory you need to adjust the memory size etc etc okay next uh, more cpu performance okay so servers often have multiple CPUs, okay? Or you might uh, refer CPU as your processors, okay? Uh, the advanced hardware features such as prefetch, okay, multi-single processor checking, and the ability to dramatically allocate resources among CPUs or some of the task that is done. So, CPUs may be available in various speeds, each linearly priced with respect to speed. As we all know, there are different versions of operating systems like, uh, uh, sorry, uh, CPUs okay, or processors. Okay, so like for example, what we already know, the quad-core, the dual-core, etc., etc. So, there are different uh, types of processors. Now, the price of the processor will depend on the... Uh, Processing speed, okay, of your processor that you are buying. Next, we have uh, high performance input output. Okay, now servers just really do more input output than clients. Okay, so the quality of input output is often proportional to the number of clients. 
Okay? So, which justifies a faster I.O. subsystem. Okay? So, since multiple users access the servers, okay, uh, the capability of the servers uh, accepting multiple inputs and outputs all at the same time is very important. Okay? Uh, that might mean that SCSI or FCAL disk drives instead of IDE, higher speed internal buses or network uh, interfaces that are orders of magnitude faster than the client. So, uh, basically, it means that uh, you buy or you put hardware okay, that is capable or that has a high capability of accepting uh, input outputs. Next, is upgrade options. Now, servers are often upgraded rather than simply replaced like we are, uh, what we are used to. For example, if we have a laptop and it's been running for three years already or four years or more, uh, the processing speed is affected. Okay, so what we, all, we do is we buy a new laptop. But in the case of servers, uh, that is not recommended. Okay, so instead of uh, buying a new server, <laughs> which is very expensive, okay, all you need to do is to upgrade. Okay, so they are designed for growth. Servers are designed for growth. Okay, servers generally have the ability to add CPUs or replace individual CPUs with the faster ones. That is why servers has multiple slots as uh, what has been said earlier. Without requiring additional hardware changes, typically server CPUs resides on separate cards within a chassis or placed in remov removable sockets on the system board. For, uh, for case of replacement. Yeah. Now, next, we have the rack mountable. Okay, so the rack mountable, server should be rack mountable. So what does that mean? So the through non-rackable uh, non servers can be put on shelves in racks. Okay, so as uh, can, you can see here in this example, in this picture, Okay, you can see that uh, the servers are placed on top of each other. So doing so, uh, so waste space and its convenience. So whereas desktop hardware may have a pretty molded plastic case in the shape of a uh, gum drop, a server should be rectangular and designed for efficient space utilization in a rack. Okay. Uh, or covers that need to be removed to do repair should be removed while the the host is still uh, rack mounted. So more importantly, the server should be engineered for cooling and ventilation in a rack mounted setting. So if you ever you you go to a server room, okay, you might be needing a thicker clothes. A jacket, most probably, because uh, the temperature inside a server room should be uh, low, okay? Because uh, we are preventing the servers to overheat, okay? So if ever it overheats, there will ha we will have a problem, okay? When it comes to servers. Next, okay, is the no side access needs a rack mounted host is easier to repair or perform maintenance on if task can be done while it remains on the rack okay so as you can see in the picture it is stuck okay so the server should be accessible for repairs so such task must be performed without access to the sides of the machine all cables should be on the uh, back and all drive base should be on front. Okay? As you can see in this picture. Okay? Next, we have high availability options. 
So many servers include various high availability options such as dual power supplies, RAID, multiple network connections, and hot swap components. Okay? So it means there will be no problems uh, with when it comes to replacing uh, hardwares that are defected or has defects. Okay, next. Okay, maintenance contracts. Vendors of server hardware service contracts that generally include guaranteed turnaround time on replacement parts. So this means that if ever a hardware or a part, parts on the server must be replaced, it will not take too long okay, uh, for that part to be replaced by the system's administrator. Okay? Because uh, uh, the uh, availability of the hardware should always be uh, easy to, uh, to be replaced or to be accessed. Next, we have okay, management options. Okay? So the management options, ideally, servers should have some capability of or for remote management. So even if the system administrator is not on the building, okay, uh, it can remotely access the system. So some servers also come with internal temperature sensors and other hardware uh, hardware monitoring that can generate notifications when problems are detected. So those are the features of a server. Next are the different service offered okay, by a server. Okay, so the service or service as defined earlier is the function that the server provides. So whatever the user needs, okay, the server can provide. Okay, the fundamental service of a server are DNS, okay, email authentication services and network connectivity and printing. Okay. So, these services are the most critical and they are the most visib visible if they fail. Okay? So, those are the services. Next, okay, uh, the other services that a server can offer are remote access methods, network license service, software depots, uh, backup services, internet access, DHCP and file service. Okay, we now go to our last okay, topic, okay, which is bandwidth and latency. Okay, now these two terms are important when it comes to data transmission over a network. So let us first define bandwidth. So, the term bandwidth refers to how much data can be transmitted in a second. Okay? You know, is, uh, uh, latency, on the other hand, is the delay before the data okay, is received by the other end. Okay? So, bandwidth is the speed, sorry, uh, the uh, uh, quantity of data to be that it can be transmit that can be transmitted per second and the latency is the uh, speed or how long will it take the data to be received by the other end by the receiving computer okay, a high latency link no matter what the bandwidth will have a long round trip time okay so, the time for a packet to go and the reply to return. So, some applications such as uh, non-interactive streaming videos are unaffected by high quality or sorry, high latency. Others are affected uh, 
greatly. So, it doesn't matter okay, how big a data can be transmitted over the network. Okay, if the latency okay, is uh, very low okay, uh, or very high, okay, not low, very high, it means that the data will come to the receiving end at a very uh, long period. Uh, for a very long time. And that the ends, or, or sorry, and that ends this topic. Okay, thank you for listening.